Assalamualaikum. कल हमने कहां तक किया था कुछ याद है आपको आवाज आ रही है मेरी जी सर कल हमने किधर तक किया था सेकंड नर्व कंप्लीट हुई थी जी सर ऑप्टिक नर्व ऑप्टिक नर्व Studying hard in med school, but it's your classmate who keeps getting high score. Uh, your right eye. And you close your left. What color is the hat pen? I guess you have not seen the video yesterday. And today we will do the third, fourth, and sixth nerve. So the third, fourth, and sixth nerve basically basically function in movement of eye muscles. So how many uh, eye muscles are there? There are actually six eye muscles in each eye: <coughs> medial rectus and lateral rectus, superior and inferior rectus, superior and inferior oblique. In this figure, you can see uh, the muscle how they move the eye. So medial rectus medially rotates the eyeball so that when we see towards the nose. The, this is the action of medial rectus, and if we see away from the nose, it's the function of lateral rectus. Uh, superior rectus and inferior uh, rectus and obliques function. Their both function is same. For example, inferior oblique elevates the eye. Superior rectus also elevates the eye. When we see upward, inferior oblique and superior rectus both work together. But when we but when we have to check for this uh, muscles uh, separately, then if you see the arrow, and if you can see my video, if I'm looking on the left side towards th this side, my eye are rotated like this. Uh, right eye is towards the nose, and left eye is away from the nose. So this eye is using medial rectus, and left eye is using uh, lateral rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus, and if I then elevate my finger and look up, so I'm looking towards the nose and upward from the right eye. At this point, when I is looking towards the nose, obliques function in elevation and uh, depression of the eye. When I'm looking up, inferior oblique is pulling this eye to uh, upward, and when I'm looking down, superior oblique is functioning. On my right eye. So uh, obliques function when the eye is uh, uh, rotated medially or towards the nose. On the, on the same uh, in same way, <coughs> the uh, rectus, superior rectus and inferior rectus function when the eye is looking outward. So again, if I'm looking towards finger that is on my uh, left side. 
So my left eye, uh, if, if I elevate this finger and look up, so my left eye, if the function is superior uh, rectus, that is elevating my eye. And if I look down, it's uh, inferior rectus. So when um, eye is uh, looking away and up, it's a rectus. And when eye is uh, seeing towards the nose, the function uh, then is carried out by uh, superior and inferior obliques. So when, uh, how to check these muscles? Um, we, uh, we heard about X-shaped uh, movement. So, so we asked the patient to uh, sit uh, comfortably and then he has to follow the finger of the, exam, uh, of the examiner. सामने बिठाया पेशेंट को पेशेंट को बोला कि आपने फिंगर को फॉलो करना है जहां जहां फिंगर जाए और अपना हेड स्टिल रखना है बिल्कुल इसको मूव नहीं करना है और आपने फिर ये जो फिंगर है वो एच शेप में एच शेप पहले हम लेटरली एच शेप ये ये अदर फिंगर सीधा देखी देन यू मूव टुवर्ड्स द वन साइड एंड अप एंड देन डाउन देन अप फिर On the other side, up and down. इस पूरे शेप में आपके ऑल सिक्स मसल जो हैं वो चेक हो जाते हैं इंक्लूडिंग बोथ साइड एक ही एक ही मेनूवर से about color desaturation. Next we examine the eye movements. Abhi, aapko video share ho rahi hai? Can you see this video? Yes, sir. Okay. So, ab, is mein, uh, they will show how to check extraocular muscle finger, movement. At least 50 centimeters away from the patient. Please keep your head still and look at my finger. Please follow my finger. And tell me if you see double at any time. Move your finger to each side and up and down, tracing the letter H in the air. Look for any divergence of the gaze, which you would see, or double vision, which the patient would report. You may also detect abnormal patterns of movement, such as nystagmus. इस एक मेनूवर से आप यू कैन चेक ऑल मसल्स अब हमें नर्व सप्लाई पता हो तो हम वी कैन डिटेक्ट द प्रॉब्लम अब इसमें हम पेशेंट को कहते हैं इंस्ट्रक्शन ये देते हैं कि अगर आपको डबल विजन हो दो दो नजर आए तो आपको रिपोर्ट करना है बताना है उस टाइम तो या तो हमें स्क्विंट मिलेगा उस डायरेक्शन में जाएंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल मेरी राइट लेटरल वेक्टर्स जो है वो पैरालाइज्ड है तो अब मैं जब जब तक मैं सीधा देखूंगा नो वन कैन डिटेक्ट इट व्हेन आई सी टुवर्ड्स राइट साइड तो ये मेरी आई जो है ये इट विल नॉट मूव टुवर्ड्स द टेंपोरल रीजन लेकिन ये आई मूव होगी इसमें हमें देखें देखेंगे कि स्क्विंट हो जाएगा जब उस डायरेक्शन में मसल की डायरेक्शन जो कि वीक है उसमें देखेंगे तो मसल सप्लाई ये है कि ऑल आर सप्लाइड बाय third nerve except lateral rectus and superior oblique so the lateral rectus is supplied by abducens yeah sixth nerve superior oblique is supplied by fourth nerve baki jo muscles hai ek do teen char ye muscles supplied hote hain by the third nerve to sabse pehle agar third nerve ka hum lesion dekhe to usme aaye jo aapko nazar aayegi isme third nerve so I will, uh, I will be down, uh, looking uh, down and out. ये आई बिल्कुल ठीक है और राइट जो आए है पेशेंट की वो डाउन एंड आउट ये इसका प्राइमरी डायरेक्शन होगा आप जैसे पेशेंट को देखेंगे तो आप एक आंख आपको ऐसे नजर आएगी आउट एंड डाउन
फिर जब आप पेशेंट को बोलेंगे कि आप लेफ्ट की तरफ देखें तो ये आए तो मूव करेगी लेफ्ट ये आए मूव नहीं करेगी ये वहीं पर स्टक होगी क्योंकि इनका मीडियल रेक्टस पैरालाइज्ड है इसलिए ये मीडियली रोटेट नहीं करेगी आए तो ये थर्ड नर्व क्योंकि बहुत सारे मसल्स इन्वॉल्व होते हैं इनको इसको पिक करना ईजी होता है जैसे आप पेशेंट देखेंगे आपको आइडिया हो जाएगा इसके साथ आप देखेंगे कि पीपल भी डायलेटेड होंगे इसमें इनका पीपल राइट आई में डायलेटेड है ठीक है थर्ड नर्व ऑल्सो सप्लाईज मोटर फंक्शन ऑफ पीपल देन देर इज राइट फोर्थ नर्व पैल्सी तो जब आप पेशेंट प्राइमरी पोजीशन पे होगा प्राइमरी पोजीशन इज ये रिलैक्स होगा आपको देख रहा होगा तो आपको इतना कुछ नजर नहीं आएगा स्क्वेंट वगैरह नजर नहीं आएगा लेकिन जब आप पेशेंट को बोलेंगे कि राइट लेफ्ट तरफ देखें तो राइट आई एलिवेट्स मोर एज इट मूव्स मीडियली डबल विजन फर्दर अपार्ट तो अगर फोर्थ नर्व पैलसी है तो फोर्थ नर्व सप्लाई करके आप इस फिगर को दोबारा देखें फोर्थ नर्व सप्लाई करती है सुपीरियर ऑब्लिक को और इसका फंक्शन है आय को डिप्रेस करना तो अगर इसका फंक्शन इम्पेयर्ड हो जाता है तो इसका ऑब्वियसली जो इसके ऑपोजिट जो है मसल उसका फंक्शन इंक्रीज हो जाता है तो ये आय एलिवेट हो जाती है जब ये नोज की तरफ पेशेंट देखेगा तो जैसे इनकी आय एलिवेट हो रही है जैसे आय जो है वो एलिवेट हो जाएगी ये इस, इस फिगर में इसमें फिर आप जब इस डायरेक्शन में देखेगा पेशेंट तभी जो है आपको स्क्वेंट नजर आएगा अदरवाइज आपको स्क्वेंट इतना क्लियर नजर नहीं आता है अगेन वेन देर इज सिक्स नर्व पेल्सी उसमें अगर पेशेंट सीधा देख रहा है दैट इज प्राइमरी पोजिशन तो मीडियली रोटेट होती है या फिर नॉर्मल भी नजर आती है आपको क्योंकि अगेन ये अगर लेटर रेक्टस काम नहीं कर रहा है इट्स नॉट फंक्शनिंग देन मीडियल रेक्टस विल ओवर एक्ट उसका जो एंटागोनिस्ट मसल है वो एम्पेयर्ड है तो इसकी पावर इंक्रीज हो जाती है और अगर ये पेशेंट जो है वो बोलेंगे कि राइट की तरफ देखें तो ये आय देखें ये पोजीशन हो जाएगी एक आय मूव करेगी जो कि नॉर्मल है जो राइट आय है पेशेंट की वो इधर ही स्टक होगी लेकिन अगर अपोजिट साइड कहेंगे लेफ्ट साइड देखें तो दोनों मूव करेंगी तो दिस इज सिक्स नर्व पेल्सी The third, fourth, and sixth nerve. So after that, um, it's trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve is mainly sensory nerve. There are few motor functions and few reflexes. Uh, basically, a whole. a uh, sensory supply of face is uh, given by this trigeminal nerve it's divided into three parts these are ophthalmic number 1 you can see its division it start starts uh, from this eyebrow up to vertex of the head this is a supply this is the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve then there is a uh, maxillary uh, nerve and then its mandibular nerve so these are three nerves are uh, branches of trigeminal nerve are to be checked so there are two parts of this sensory examination first is pain which is called, which is done by pin and then soft touch so you have to touch this uh, three parts separately and ask the patient if there is any difference in these three and you compare it with the opposite side so when you uh, touch part on the uh, left temporal then you will compare it with the right temporal again you will touch at the maxillary uh, part and then you will ask the patient to compare it with opposite side so the uh, second part is motor examination uh, the geminal nerve supplies masseter muscle and temporalis muscle these are muscles of mastication usually uh, they cause closing of the jaw so we ask the patient to clench the uh, teeth and we we, uh, we just palpate the bulk of the two muscles these masseter muscles we ask the patient to clench and we see if the bulk is 
uh, equal on both sides. And then again, we ask the patient to clench and we just palpate this temporalis muscle and uh, see the bulk of the muscle. If there is any uh, weakness in the muscle, that muscle will get atrophy. And then there, uh, these are the reflexes. So it's corneal reflex, conjunctival reflex, and jaw jerk. So in uh, corneal reflex or conjunctival reflex, we just touch the cornea of the patient with a cotton swab. So you can see we just um, uh, ask the patient to look at uh, away from the examiner and then we touch this cotton pin, uh, cotton swab and see uh, the, the reflex, the response will be blinking of the eye. As soon as we touch, both eyes will blink. It's, it's natural uh, reflex. So in there are abnormality, there can be abnormal and um, abnormalities. For example, if the, if the patient has seventh nerve palsy or if the patient has trigeminal uh, uh, nerve abnormality, this patient won't sense anything if we touch the cornea and there will be no blinking on any side. After that, we check the jaw jerk. Jaw jerk, we just put the finger and ask the patient to relax the jaw and we just tap it. I will show you uh, the video for the examination of trigeminal nerve. These all videos are Good available over the YouTube. You can if you see want to them, write practice them messages that forge brighter connections and emails that get the job done. These are very useful videos. Hello, Abby. My name is Amy. Please may I examine your face? Yes. First, test light touch sensation. I'm going to touch your face. With some cotton wool. Please, could you co close your eyes and tell me when you feel me touch you? On both sides, test the three divisions of the nerve the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. Now. 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 Repeat the test for pain sensation. I'm now going to touch your face with a small pin. Please close your eyes and tell me if you feel it sharp. Carefully test each of the three areas on both sides. Be aware that brainstem lesions may cause sensory loss in an onion skin pattern. Carefully dispose of the shark. Use an orange stick to test touch on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. I'm going to touch your tongue with this. Please close your eyes and stick out your tongue. Thank you. Do you feel it the same on both sides? Yes. You can also ask the patient to indicate with a hand when they feel you touch them. Assess the motor function now. Look for wasting in the muscles of mastication. Please clench your teeth. Feel the bulk and contraction in the masseters. Please open your mouth against my hand. Carefully provide resistance to mouth opening, testing the pterygoid muscles. Next, test the corneal reflex. Draw out a wisp of cotton wool and dampen it to form a gentle point. I'm going to gently touch your eye. Please look up for me. Gently depress the lower eyelid and lightly touch the edge of the cornea. Look for direct and consensual blinking. Lastly, the jaw jerk reflex. I'm gently going to tap your chin. 
Ask the patient to let their mouth hang loosely open. Place your forefinger across the midline between the lower lip and chin. Look for reflex closing of the jaw. An absent or minimal response is normal. Thank you. So the jaw the jaw can be absent or can be very uh, difficult to assess, but, but it's not. It's, it can be normal, but when it's uh, exaggerated, then we call it abnormal. So in normal situation, the jaw can be absent or very minimum. So the facial nerve, facial nerve is kind of very important nerve because it's uh, most commonly uh, patients present in clinic with this Bell's palsy or facial nerve palsy. Uh, so there are two main uh, things that we ha you have to assess whether the patient has facial nerve palsy or not, and then if the patient has facial nerve palsy. What kind of facial palsy it is? Is it whether it's upper motor neuron or it's lower motor neuron. So you will assess this upper motor neuron, uh, the difference between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron clinically. So uh, what, what are the steps? The steps are that we ask the patient to look up and uh, you, you see the creases over the forehead, whether they are equal or not. This is the first step. Then you ask the patient to close their eyes and you try to open them and see the, if the force of the both eye is equal. Then you ask the patient to blow their cheeks and you push them uh, so that you, you can assess if there is any weakness, the air will leak from that side. And you finally, you ask the patient to show their teeth and see if there is any deviation of the mouth. So if the patient has facial palsy, uh, you can see this uh, in figure, this patient has left facial palsy. There will be uh, eye aperture will be a little smaller, smaller than the right, uh, the other eye, normal eye. There will be uh, loss of nasolabial fold. Usually this, we have this nasolabial fold, which is normal, but when there is an, an uh, facial nerve palsy this kind of goes away and there is drooping of the angle of the mouth not shown in this figure if, if we ask the patient to look up this eyebrow will elevate this won't elevate this will stay there so let's see uh, video of the examination Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message. Hello, my name's Ben. Mind if I examine you? No. Just look straight ahead for me. Inspect the whole face for asymmetry, including differences in blue. So you can see wrinkling uh, very uh, prominent and it's uh, on both sides is equal. Now can you show me your teeth like this? Again, look for asymmetry. Now close your eyes and don't let me open them. Test power by gently trying to overcome eye closure. Now can you blow out your cheeks for me please? And hold them out as I try to press them in. Try and push air out through the patient's lips. Thank you.
so uh, for a differentiation between upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion uh, you have you will have to understand this figure a little bit um, so this is cortex this is brain stem and this is the facial nerve on both sides so the, the brain stem or a nucleus of cranial uh, seventh cranial nerve get supplies uh, from both cortexes from the right and the left it's a little difficult to make you understand in this figure but i will try so if the lesion is upper motor neuron that means if the lesion is here in the cortex the uh, fish uh, the involvement will be only lower part of the face so the patient will have angle deviation that mouth will uh, deviate towards one side so if, if this patient has left or if i have left facial palsy so my mouth will deviate towards the right side but when i close my eye i have full force i have no uh, asymmetry in the wrinkling so only lower part of the face will be involved in upper motor neuron lesions only lower part of the face will involve in lower motor neuron lesions whole of the face will involve so there will be no uh, creases on the forehead there will be, there will be difficulty closing the eye there will be uh, difficulty raising the eyebrow and again there will be a, a deviation of angle of mouth but on contrary if the uh, there is only upper motor neuron lesion the wrinkling will be intact the eye closure will be intact only you will observe that there will be deviation of angle of mouth so if if the lesion is if you examine the patient and the lesion you see is kind of upper motor neuron lesion then you will uh, think that the lesion is in the brain and not in the nerve or brain stem but if you see a patient who has complete facial paralysis on one side that means the lesion is in the nerve it's in the facial nerve Uh, so uh, I will end my lecture here and if you have any question you can ask.